Hello, this is Søren from Open Regulatory, and this is the video about unique device identifiers, or short, UDIs. I'm sure you've heard of this requirement from the EU MDR, but please keep in mind, if you're certified under the directives like MDD or IVDD at the moment, this is already applicable to you, applicable to you as well. So let's start off with the requirements. You can actually find them in the MDR in Article 27 and in Annex 6, Part C. And the MDCG also has a lot of guidances on those UDI requirements. You can find them on the official website of the European Commission. And here are all the MDCG guidances regarding UDIs. They even have a help desk for UDIs where you can find videos and additional informational material. But let's jump right into it. How does a UDI look? Here you can see how a UDI would look on a finished product. You have the UDI symbol, then the machine readable UDI barcode and the human readable version of the UDI. This symbol is mandatory and it comes from ISO 15223-1 from 2021, where you can also find other symbols like, for example, the MD symbol and other stuff that's relevant for your medical device documentation. So how do you get this code and the, the numbers? The UDI actually consists of three different parts. You have the basic UDI DI, not to be confused with the UDI DI, and you have the UDI PI. DI in this case stands for device identifier, and PI stands for product identifier. And how do you get them now? You need to actually buy the UDI DI, then you can generate the basic UDI DI, and then you can make up the UDI PI. So let's start at the beginning. How and where do you buy this UDI DI? You can unfortunately not buy it from the European Commission or from some other official place, but you actually need to register with a private company that issues numbers. There are four of them that are currently um, accredited by the European Commission. And I've listed those in an article that I wrote on our website on openregulatory.com. The article is called How to Get a UDI. And here you can see those are the four issuing entities that issue numbers that then translate to UDIs. Of those four, I can recommend GS1 or IFA. So you would need to browse to their websites and buy your UDI DI. But there wouldn't be a button where it says buy UDI. Instead, you would find something like this. So on the GS1 side, you can buy GTINs and you can generate GMNs, but they translate to the UDI in this way. So the basic UDI DI is the GMN and the UDI DI is the GTIN 13. The UDI PI, as I said, you can make up yourself, but from this numbering system, there are certain rules how to actually come up with this number. I will explain that later. If you register with IFA, then you have the BUDI and the PPN and also rules for the application identifier or UDI PI. Now let's take a look at the UDI DI. This is the first thing that you need to buy. And if you buy it at GS1, you will get a GTIN 13. Sometimes you will also get a GTIN 14, but that's not really relevant here because this is more for Northern America. And it might be the case that you either get one of those numbers or a whole set. Um, for example, with GS Germany, I think it's a set of 1000 
G tins that you would buy, but you don't actually need that much, at least if you just have one or two products that you want to register. Um, so keep in mind here that this UDIDI only changes when you make major changes to your device or your software, and then you would need a new UDIDI. So it's very unlikely that you will ever need 1000 UDIDIs uh, with the software. All right. Now, when you bought this UDIDI, you will get a so-called company prefix along with it. And with this number that's uh, unique for your company, you can generate your basic UDIDI. The basic UDIDI looks something like this. I will show you how to generate it at the example of GS1. You need to go to this website that I just clicked on. And um, there's one for IFA as well, but that's a different one. They you would have the BUDI calculator here for GS1. It's the GMN calculator. So now you entered the company prefix that you got when you registered for your uh, UDIDI. And then now you will enter the internal number or model reference. So this could just be the name of your device or just an internal reference number, something like amazing device. And then you hit calculate. What it does now is it generates those two um, letters that you can also check then here. If you enter them here and hit validate, you see, yes, this is a valid basic UDIDI. I don't know when you would ever need this functionality to validate it, but um, it's quite cool actually. All right, um, I would recommend to just put the device's name here. Sometimes I see it that people enter a version number here. This is um, not so ideal. And also you cannot do it actually, because <laughs> it's too long right now. Um, well, whatever. I wouldn't uh, enter a version number here because this basic UDI DI um, describes your whole product and that's independent of the version. So this will always stay the same no matter what version or model of the device you have at hand. Um, for identifying the version or model, you have the UDI DI. So um, yeah, that's why I would recommend to just have the name here and no version number. And if you, for example, bump the first digit of your software version number, so you upgrade from a 2.0 to a 3.0, um, then you would change the UDI DI. But if the intended use and everything stays the same, you still have the basic UDI DI uh, staying the same. All right. And then. Uh, we get to the UDI PI. Here you can see an example. This is a production date of a software. This has been produced in 2023 in June on day 30. And of course, for this UDI PI, you have certain rules how to structure the data. This you can find under this link for GS1. If you open it, there you can find a list of all the so-called application identifiers. So there's quite a long list of them. What I used now is the production date um, that has the data format year, year, month, month, day, day. You can see it here. And it has the application identifier 11. So, and when we look at our finished uh, UDI, you can see here that you have an 11 that's um, signaling, okay, here comes a production date, and then you have the production date here. That's your UDI PI. And uh, when you look at this list, it helps you also 
uh, understand what this first number is. So if you have a 0, 1, that encodes for GTIN. So that's our UDI DI. So in fact, here we have the UDI DI and the UDI PI. And that's a complete UDI. That's how you would find it on the product. The basic UDI DI you wouldn't find on the product. That, you, that one you only use for high-level communication, for example, with your notified body or the Udemy database. All right. Um, production date as a UDI PI mostly makes sense if you have a cloud-hosted software medical device where your production date changes every time you make a patch because um, you basically have only one product and everyone accesses it and the only distinction between your products is the production date. But if you have a physical product, something like a pacemaker, then you would need a different UDI PI for every single piece that you produce. So it makes more sense to then use something like a serial number as the UDI PI, which would be encoded with 21. And you would put 21 and the serial number. And the UDI PI can actually be uh, multiple things, it doesn't only have to be one. So you could, after this 11, you could also add, for example, a 17 and then um, add an expiration date for the device. That's all possible. All right, and this is your finalized UDI. I hope this could help you and I wish you all the best with your UDI.